Let's start off by opening up Visual Studio Code wherever you want to begin this project. And now let's use Create React App to create our client-side application. We're going to do this by typing in the Create React App command. We're going to specify the project name to be client. And then we're going to use a dash dash template is equal to TypeScript. That way it sets up a React project for us with TypeScript already enabled. And while it's setting this up, we're also going to take care of a few other things. We're going to create a new folder and call it .vs code. Inside of it, we're going to create a settings.json file. And this is if you're using Visual Studio Code. I'm going to copy and paste in some settings here. And what these settings are for is for making, the, uh, making all of the code look good once you save it by using the Prettier plugin. Uh, making sure everything's tabbed correctly, it has all of the colons, etc. So you can see here the prettier code formatter I have installed in my plugins. So what you have to do next inside your client folder is create a .prettierrc file. Inside of it, I'm going to copy and paste some settings again that will be available to you in the GitHub repo. And what this is, is as you can see, it's just some basic settings for how I want my text formatted. So this is how I keep my code uh, looking the same across all my files. Now that we have everything installed, let's go ahead and change the directory to the client inside of our terminal. And then let's install a few packages. We're gonna install React Router DOM and React Strap. And React Router DOM is going to be used for page routing. And React Strap is how we're going to use Bootstrap inside of React. Once those are finished installing, then we're gonna go ahead and install a dev dependency. And we're gonna be installing the types for React Router DOM. We actually don't need to install the types for React Strap as they now come with the React Strap package, which is great. Once that's installed, let's go ahead and clean up some of these files here. We're going to select the, all of the files that I select here and just go ahead and delete them. Inside of our index.tsx file, I'm just going to get rid of everything in my React render. And I'm just going to go ahead and put a React fragment in there after. I'm going to remove some of these imports. And then once all my errors go away, just save the file. This is just going to be a placeholder for now. I'm going to get rid of every file in here that is an index.html and the icon. And inside of the index.html, I'm going to get rid of the definitions for the manifest JSON and everything up to you see here. And now I'm just going to put on a little tag and just say, this is where I'm putting my custom CSS or my script. So you can put whatever you want here. Now, what we actually need to do is go ahead and grab a bootstrap theme. So I'm going to use the flatly theme from boots watch. I think it's a very professional looking theme and I think it's going to look really, really nice when we create our blog. What I'm going to do is I'm going to search for a CDN that actually allows me just to go ahead and link that directly into my index.html so I don't actually have to download the CSS. Once you have your CSS link copied, go back to your HTML file and paste it where it needs to go. Next, I'm going to go ahead and add a custom font and it's called the Mont, I believe it's pronounced Montserrat from Google. I really, really like this font and I think it would look really, really good for a blog. It's clean and it's got a nice sleek look to it. So how you, do is, how you do this is you just go ahead and select a bunch of styles, and then you just copy the CSS. I already have it in another project, so I'm gonna copy it directly from that, and you can go ahead and copy this directly from the repo. Last but not least, I'm gonna also go ahead and copy and paste directly in here a Font Awesome CDN for my CSS. Font Awesome will give you all those cool icons you can use without actually having to download images, and we're gonna to wanna to use a few of these inside of our project. Next, I'm gonna put a little style tag in here and I'm going to add a body tag. And what I'm gonna type in here is just a definition for my font family so that all the fonts inside of my application use the new font that I've added. Now, if you take a look at this web page here, I have a snippet for something called Three Dots, a CSS loading animations made by single element. This user has created these really, really cool loading dots. And while we're creating this application, I thought it would be cool. Why not show you how to implement a cool snippet like this into your React project? There is no CDN for this CSS without actually directly linking it to this page. So what we can do is we can go ahead and copy all that CSS and we can create a file for it. 
I'm going to create an assets folder in my source folder. I'm going to then create a styles folder inside of that. And inside of that, I'm going to have a dots.css. And I'm going to go ahead and paste this in. Now, just so you know, I will have a link to this at the bottom of the video because we are going to give full credit to the person who created this. Now that that's implemented, if I take a look at that web page one more time, I'll notice that all of the CSS, the dots, sit in this special holder called stage as he has defined. So we might want to just go ahead and include that too, just so the dots render nicely inside of our React application. I'm going to go ahead and also just change the title really fast. And that should be all of the basic stuff that I need for my client side. Now I'm going to go ahead and actually change folders here inside my terminal. And I'm going to create my server folder. Inside of my server folder, I'm going to type npm init, and I'm going to start a new project. I'm going to leave everything the same except for my entry point, And I'm going to change that to a source slash server.ts as we are using TypeScript. Once you create your server-side API, then you have to enable TypeScript. Go ahead and type in tse dash dash init. You should see a ts config JSON file pop up. All of the settings we're going to use are going to be the same, except for the out directory, and we're going to change that to period forward slash build. Inside of my package here, I'm going to change my test script, and I'm just going to create a script where I remove the build folder, force prettier to write the source folder, and then compile the TypeScript. So if you ever want to run the build command in the future, this will give you a fresh build that has been applied through prettier. Next, I'm going to run an npm install express and mongoose. Express is our HTTP API framework and mongoose is our MongoDB wrapper. Next, I'm going to install the type definitions as a dev dependency for express and mongoose. I'm going to copy and paste the prettier RC file from my client folder to my server folder because I want this to apply to both projects. Inside of my server folder, I'll create a source folder. Now let's go back to the client side and add a little bit more configuration. Inside of the source folder on the client side, go ahead and create a config folder. Next, create a file and we're going to call it config.ts. This is where our configuration for our client side will be held. Go ahead and create an object called config and also make it the default export of the file. Once you do that, inside of the config object, we're going to add a Firebase object and we're going to add a server object. Inside of the server object, define a key called URL and define that as HTTP localhost and then give it the port you want to work with. I'm obviously picking 1337. For the Firebase object, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our Firebase console and we're going to go ahead and copy and paste that object that should be sitting inside of your project settings under the general tab under your apps. It should be that app that you created. Paste that into your project where this Firebase object is. Once we set up Firebase, when we do our user contexts, we'll have all our configuration ready to go. Now, I always like to define a logging file as well. Here you can pause the video, and if you don't want to use the logging that I use, you can use a logging library, like uh, I think what's called Morgan or Log4JS, or there's a whole bunch of options for you to use. However, I'm going to copy and paste in this logging function that I usually set up for my projects, and that's just because defining my own logging library is just very lightweight, and I don't need anything complicated, as I only use an info, warning, and error function. So if you want to use my logging, you could just go ahead and copy and paste that from the GitHub repo. I have it in many of my projects, so I'm not going to go through it here. Now on my server side, I'm going to do the same thing and I'm going to create a config folder. I'm going to copy and paste my logging and my config files from my client side into my server side. In my config file, I'm going to change a few things here. I'm going to get rid of the URL and I'm going to separate 
them out into a host and a port without the HTTP. So you should have two keys now under server, one for host, one for port. Make sure that these match whatever you're using on your client side. I'm gonna get rid of my Firebase key entirely and I'm gonna put in a Mongo object. Inside this Mongo object, I'm gonna create an options key and I'm gonna copy and paste from a previous project where I showed you how to set up Mongo, the actual options you need to put in. Also, for the URL, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go back to your Mongo Atlas page and you're gonna copy and paste whatever the connection key is. And when you paste in that connection key, you're gonna make sure that you have your username and password set in properly. So let's paste in our options. And now let's go to the Mongo Atlas, click connect, click choose a different connection method. And you're gonna to wanna to hit option number two and copy and paste this line. Now you'll see that at the end of my connection string, there's that retry rights and the majority and whatnot. Basically, after the My First database, you should change this to whatever you want your database to be called. And then you don't need to include those options after because I'm already including them as a Mongo options object just above it. I'm going to go to my logging file and I am going to just rename this to server. And finally, I'm going to go back to my Firebase console and I'm going to set up my service account for my Firebase admin on the server side. So what you're going to do inside of your Firebase console is you're going to scroll up and you're going to service accounts and then you're going to create a new private key. You're going to generate it and then you can just go ahead and open that JSON and I'm going to open it and it just popped open on another screen for me here, but it's just going to be a JSON file and make sure you copy and paste the contents. So copy it and then we're going to create a file for you to paste it in on the server side. So inside of my config folder, I'm going to create a new JSON file called service account key.json. Inside of that, I'm gonna paste the contents from my service account that I downloaded. And now we have all of our basic configuration and setup that we need for both the server and client side. So that just about does it for this video. In the next video, we're gonna actually set up our API.